thanks everybody for introducing yourselves. You are all definitely bringing tons of amazing talent and experience to this course, and I'm definitely looking forward to learning from you as well during this course. When I was asked to teach this course, I was absolutely elated. This is completely my wheelhouse, and this is where I've lived pretty much my entire career so far. I know many of you may be dreading the group project in this course. I, like you, took these uh, same types of courses, and the group projects weren't always something I looked forward to either. However, working within the software development lifecycle in some fashion for the last 17 plus years has definitely made me appreciate the group work we did in these courses because it definitely prepared me for how things really are in the workforce. Same thing with the use of Skype. When I took the course, Skype was something that I dreaded. However, the role I am currently in, I do not see any of my peers face to face. I actually work remotely from my home office. The rest of my group is all located throughout the globe. Minnesota, Wisconsin, Florida, Oklahoma, Pune, India, Sydney, Australia, Beijing, China, Japan, Dublin, Ireland, Sofia, Bulgaria, and some other states and countries. So I utilize WebEx versus Skype for Business at Work, but it's the same type of concept. And I'm usually on WebEx between 6 to 10 hours per day with my peers to work on software development projects. And we utilize the software development lifecycle methodology daily, which is what we're learning in this course. We also utilize SharePoint sites to share information with each other and be able to have a common place we can all access and update information. For me, I also use Camtasia Studio once a month to create short demos of enhancements and fixes that go into the system, uh, which allow our users to have a quick reference of what's going in. So the use of the group project, the tools such as Skype for Business, SharePoint presentation software, etc. are all things that are really used in the real world. So this group project is really set up to mirror that type of experience. I also encourage you to spend some time updating your LinkedIn account to really outline your experiences and what you are looking for in a career. I receive at least two to three emails and two to three calls a week based on keeping my profile updated. The career you search for is out there. I never thought I would land a career with a company that would let me work remotely from the comfort of my home office, and I did. Luckily, I had taken this course and had some background on some of the tools that are actually used in the industry. A couple other things, please ensure you are using the checklists and the big yellow box and the module links. So remember the big yellow box is on the home page, tells you what module we're in, the start and end dates of each module, the link to the module materials, and then the link to the checklist. A reminder too that you can contact me in several different ways. You can contact me with the Skype for Business chat feature. You can schedule a time with me to actually Skype face to face. You can email me. You can call me. You can also text me. However, if you text me, you must put your first and last name in the text message and reference ICT 355 or 555 so I know who you are. Another item, this course is built with many opportunities to get bonus points. We as instructors want you to succeed in this course. If you do the work with effort behind it, you should have no issues passing this course and hopefully come out with some really great experiences and learning opportunities. Also, please do not skip on reading the textbook. Like I mentioned, I've wor been working in this field for many years, and this is by far the best textbook I have read. I've read it from cover to cover, and it outlines systems analysis and design really well. Something else that came up during some of the initial introduction discussions that I want to make sure that I bring up. Some of you may be wondering why Salesforce? In order to give you a hands-on learning experience with the tool, Salesforce was selected for this ICT course. We used to use Microsoft Dynamics CRM. Some of you may have had experiences in, cor in past courses with Microsoft Dynamics CRM. And in the, in the last semester, we switched to using Salesforce. It's meant to give you, as a student, hands-on learning in an actual CRM tool so you get to experience all aspects for the course learning and also teach you concepts of a CRM tool as many utilize the same philosophy. This course is not about the tool Salesforce. It is about the concepts behind what, what and how a CRM tool works to get you that hands-on experience. Salesforce offers a free trailhead that we utilize in this course because it does provide students with the hands-on learning of a tool. These same concepts you are learning are similar in other CRM tools that are out there, but unfortunately not all CRM tools offer learning and development system environments for those who are not actual customers. 
It's not required, but if you wanted to showcase the learnings you have done via your trailhead, Salesforce offers that opportunity to earn badges and such and track them in your trailhead. There are many companies in the industry utilizing Salesforce and look for applicants with experience in Salesforce. If you are having any issues with the Salesforce module, I will not leave you on your own. Yes, it may require working directly with Salesforce, but I have been through the same trailhead items you have and will assist you as best I can and direct you to contact Salesforce if needed. I'm not going to leave you high and dry. This course for me is about learning, and, and if you are stuck, let's learn together. All right, so enough about the orientation module. Let's take a look at what's coming up in module one. So in module one, you're going to be asked to read the chapter. So in module one, you're going to be asked to read chapter one. It provides a great deal of the background you will need for this course, so please read it. You'll also be asked to complete the chapter one quiz, which you get three attempts, and the highest score will be recorded as your module quiz grade. You'll also be asked to do discussions with this module. Make sure you are participating in the discussions for this module. Please ensure you're familiar with the discussion rules, which include when the original post is due and the replies to your peers are due. You'll also start your Salesforce Trailhead badges. These are really to get you familiarized with functions within the CRM we are using with this course, and ultimately what you will be using as your CRM for your group project for this course. There are two trailheads to complete with this module. Please also note that your group formation is due in this module as well. You should determine your group and tell me the names, as well as creating a group logo, requesting a, a group wiki, which I will set up for you, and then completing and posting group contract on group wiki, as well as having your group meetings. A reminder to graduate students, please begin the development of your plan to address the graduate objective. All of this information can be found on module one. As always, if you guys have any questions, please reach out to me and I will assist you as best I can. Thank you and have a wonderful week.